Good afternoon, respective viewers. This is George from Ireland, and here I am in Kew, London. Behind me is uh, the house formerly owned by the Earl of Bute, who was Prime Minister. So, um, John Stuart was his name, um, so, but he was known by his title, the Earl of Bute, when he later succeeded to that. So he came from a uh, remote Scots island called Bute, uh, and noble titles, they generally go after the place where the family has their largest estate. Uh, and he was brought up as an, an Episcopalian, which is a mi minority Protestant sect in Scotland, as in it's the equivalent of Church of England, but in Scotland. The same usages and rites and so on, but it wasn't the established church. The established church in Scotland at the time was the Church of Scotland, which is Presbyterian. Um, anyway, he went to Eton, he went, later went to the University of Leiden in the Netherlands. Now, could he speak Dutch? Well, hardly at all, but all the lectures were in Latin, whether Oxford, Cambridge, Leiden, or almost any uh, university in the Western world at the time. And uh, he came back and uh, he was elected to the House of Commons. You might say, but he was a lord, surely he was in the House of Peers. Well, um, in those days, um, the Scottish peers were rather few in number and they elected so rather many in number, they elected a few representative peers because there were too many of them. Um, the, the monarchs gave out lots of titles relating to Scotland prior to the Act of Union, but those didn't automatically confer a right to sit in the House of Lords um, of England and Wales. Then Scotland, England and Wales all united 1707, and those titles relating to Scotland awarded before 1707 didn't confer an ex officio right to be in the House of Lords. Uh, anyway, he was a Tory. Um, so political parties were very informal in those days. There was no membership role, official leader. A Tory was anyone who called himself a Tory. There wasn't any um, credo. There was a Tamworth Manifesto. The first statement of Tory beliefs was until uh, 1834. Um, anyway, he'd also, he was also um, a keen botanist and how apposite that he has his house just over the wall from Kew Gardens. He later became a tutor to George III. So George III was a, was a teenager, his grandfather George II was alive, George III's father was Frederick Prince of Wales. But Frederick Prince of Wales predeceased his own father George II. Um, the monarchs didn't go to school in those days, uh, it's only Prince Charles, he is the first generation of to be British monarchs. Um, who, who went to school. They had private tutors up until that point. Um, anyway, uh, so um, Lord Bute, when he was tucking George III in, he would supposedly say, George be king, George be king, encouraging to be a patriot king and a Tory king at that, and to dish the Whigs. That was the other political party. And not to take any nonsense from the Whig prime ministers who'd been more or less bossing monarchs around. Uh, these Hanoverians who didn't quite understand the way things were done in the United Kingdom. But uh, by 1760, when George III inherited, they did know, because they'd been there. Well, he was the fourth generation, so he was only the second generation born in the United Kingdom. Um, so that's uh, Lord Bute. He only served for a few years, then he was pushed out. There was quite a bit of anti-Scotch prejudice. Um, the North Britain satirical magazine was published by the scabrous journalist John Wilkes, later MP. and. Um, Wilkes, he showed a boot um, being hung from a petticoat, as if to imply that Lord Bute was having an affair with George III's mother. Um, but he was able to, uh, well, not quite get away with it. A writ was issued for Wilkes to be arrested. They didn't let me name him because it was published anonymously. Whoever published the North Britain was to be arrested. North Britain was a name for a Scotsman, like South Britain for an Englishman, Ancient Britain for a Welshman, because the Ancient Britons moved to Wales, West Britain for an Irishman, although that's um, not always honorific when it's said like that. Uh, anyway, so Lord Bute, he uh, was pushed out, was not terribly popular. He was just really doing his duty, not because he actually liked to be Prime Minister. He'd been faced by howling mobs, had to hire a gang of toughs to accompany him around. Unfortunately, his house is not open to the public, but it stands here in Kew Green, which was laid out as a green in, this, in the 18th century. And here, Frederick, Prince of Wales, used to play cricket against the Duke of Marlborough, uh, a tradition which is still honoured. And the, behind this church is a little cricket pavilion. Um, and what else can I tell you? A number of other famous people used to live around here. One of the pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood. Thomas Gainsborough, the renowned artist, he lies interred in um, that uh, graveyard, as do the first two directors of the Royal Horticultural Gardens, a father and son pair. That's enough for the moment from Kew Green.